This video is a walkthrough of how to answer an exam question writing a method for a simple acid-base titration, the like of which you would have completed for the second part of the first required practical in AQA A-level chemistry. Before I walk you through how to tackle this question, pause the video and have a go at writing an answer of your own. Remember, for a six mark question like this, you should be spending about six minutes, making sure that you name all of your equipment and justify the steps of the method where you can. By this point, you've probably done more than a dozen titrations and are fairly happy with how to complete them. But remember, there is a lot of detail that we need to be including here, and we do need to be talking about why we're doing each step that we're doing. So before we even start, we're going to make sure that our burette is free of contamination. So we're going to rinse it through with sodium hydroxide. Now, the reason that it's the sodium hydroxide for this question is that I do know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So with your titration, for the two different solutions you're working with, there's always one thing you do know and one thing you don't know about each solution. So whatever's going in the burette, I don't know at the start of the reaction how much I'm going to add. That's going to be determined by when the end point happens. So therefore, that's the one that I do know the concentration of. So it's not the case that it's always the alkali or anything like that. Now we need to rinse that burette in order to remove any contamination or any impurities that are in there and I can't rinse it with water because if I did there'd be some water left behind afterwards and that would dilute the sodium hydroxide that was going to add so the concentration wouldn't be what I thought it was and all of my calculations would be out. So you're always rinsing with the solution that you are going to use. Once we've done that, we're going to make sure that the burette is overfilled, so it's gone over the zero, and that's going to allow me to let some through into a waste beaker, and I'm doing that so that the jet space is filled, because if that jet space is empty when I start titrating, then the first couple of centimetres cubed that I sort of think of adding is not actually going to go into the conical flask with acid, it's just going to be filling up that jet space. So that's going to give me a really inaccurate reading, and therefore um, all of my calculations would be out. Next, I need to measure out my hydrochloric acid using a volumetric pipette and pipette filler. You can get away with not calling it a volumetric pipette, but you absolutely can't be mentioning a dropping pipette at any point. So we're going to use that volumetric pipette to transfer exactly 25 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid to a conical flask. And the reason it's a conical flask is because a conical flask is going to um, avoid any splashing when I'm swirling later. Once I've done that, I'm going to add just a couple of drops of um, a suitable indicator. So here I'm using phenolphthalein because that's a really, really good one for this titration, but you don't actually need to name a specific indicator unless it's a question where they've given you in the year 13 acids and bases topic, they've given you some information about indicators and they're asking you to pick the appropriate one. So now I'm set up. I've got my solution with the known concentration in the burette. I've got my solution with the unknown concentration in the conical flask. And also in that conical flask, I have just one or two drops of this suitable indicator. And I don't want to have any more than that, because if I did, then that could react with the reactant in the conical flask, and that would affect the results of the titration as well. So now I'm ready to start titrating. I'm ready to start adding the alkali from the burette to the conical flask where it can react with the acid. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to be swirling consistently um, to homogenize that solution and make sure that everything is reacting together. And I'm also going to rinse down the end of the burette and also the sides of the conical flask using a wash bottle of deionized water. I'm going to keep going until I see my first permanent colour change. So it's important that even after you've swirled, that colour change remains, and therefore we know that we found the end point. And when we find that end point, we don't just shout hooray and stop, we write down the volume of the alkali that's been added to the acid to achieve that end point. You're then obviously going to do this more than once. Your first titration is probably a rough titration that you throw away anyway, but even then you're going to continue doing these titrations until you have results that are concordant. So remember that concordant data, um, our volumes are within 0.1 of each other. We're going to use those concordant data to calculate a mean titer. And we're then going to use the formula moles is concentration multiplied by volume to calculate how many moles of sodium hydroxide we've added. Now, we need to look at the um, ratio with which the alkali and the acid react together, which here would just be one to one. So because they react in a one to one ratio, however many moles of sodium hydroxide I've added, that is the same as the moles of hydrochloric acid. 
And then finally, we're going to use those moles of hydrochloric acid divided by the volume of the hydrochloric acid in order to calculate what the concentration of that original solution is. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you're now feeling slightly more confident about your ability to write a method for this second half of the first required practical of AQA A-level chemistry. If you are finding these videos useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.